What's going on guys? I appreciate you tuning in to today's episode. Today we're back out at Penrith for Collecticon, scouring hundreds of tables of toys and collectible goodness. Let's see what we can find. If you've seen my previous episodes, Toy Hunting at Collecticon Penrith, you'll have a pretty good idea of what to expect. Literally hundreds of tables of vintage and modern toys and other collectibles. And what's really cool about Collecticon, in particular Collecticon Penrith, is you can always rely on it for a really solid turnout of vintage toys. It feels like of the toys that are there, a good ratio of those are vintage toys. And you know that vintage shit's right up my alley. So I'm always geared up for a big day at Collecticon Penrith. And today did not disappoint. Now, once again, as we usually do, I had the early bird entry, and usually I try to take advantage of that one hour early bird entry to kind of see the whole show floor, all of the halls, all of the aisles of tables, and at least get one good look at everything quickly before the general admission pour in. This time, I was thrown off my game by the incredible stall that Owen had. I've mentioned Owen before. Owen from Here For Toys, you can catch him on Instagram. And he's always got a mad selection of not only vintage TMNT, but very vintage TMNT heavy, but also the other lines that I love. We're talking Mighty Max, we're talking Toxic Crusaders. We'll talk about those in just a minute because I found it difficult just to move past the incredible selection of vintage TMNT that Owen had. Figures, vehicles, loose, carded, additional merch like a wicked skateboard. I, I was just captivated by Owen's selection of TMNT that he had on offer. And man, I don't even know where to start with this, guys. When I toy hunt at Collecticon, often if I find a complete TMNT figure that I don't already have in my collection, I just pick it up because I normally don't have that much choice or I normally don't have as much choice as I did today. Owen had tons of figures that I don't have in my collection already. Now, the figure that I ultimately settled on as my first purchase of the day is this complete Antrax figure because when I've got a choice of lots of different complete TMNT figures that I don't already have in my collection, I tend to gravitate towards the figures that I really want to buy complete because they're hard to complete if you buy them incomplete. And that's that's the case absolutely with Antrax because not only does he have three accessories, he's got four antenna and often they're missing or even worse than that, they're snapped off or they've come off and they're glued back in. Picking up a nice, clean, complete Antrax from Owen, it just takes all that hassle away. I, listen, I never mind buying a loose, incomplete figure and piecing together with some accessories later on. I'm always happy to do that. It's a nice, it's a satisfying way to collect, and sometimes it can be a more cost-effective way to collect. But when you get a figure like Antrax that has all the accessories, all the antennas, prone to breakage, I like to just take that hassle out and buy him complete. And I'm super happy with this, guys. 1991 Antrax, a really, Good example of what made that TMNT line so special when we get to 1991 and 1992 is just these wicked mutant creature figures. And I'm really, really happy to have Antrax in the collection. So Antrax formed part of my first purchase of the day. And I'm really happy to have Antrax in the collection. Can't wait to get him on the shelf.
Now I mentioned that Antrax was part of my first purchase because when I finally managed to drag myself away from the TMNT figures, I saw that Owen had a wicked selection of Mighty Max sets. Lots of complete Mighty Max sets, lots of Doom Zones, some really cool horror heads, some harder to find sets, a lot of them complete, a lot of them with their original card backs, which is just an added bonus. Now, if you follow the channel, you know that when it comes to Mighty Max, I, my focus is very much the Doom Zones, completing all 18 Doom Zones that they put out. I've got four left, they're all from the last wave, they're all really hard to come by. So I'm not holding my breath, but I was stoked to see that Owen had one set there that I needed, and it's complete. And I'm talking about Mighty Max Lashes Lizard, and it's a wicked looking exterior. I would love to open this up and show you guys how it works and show you all the little hidden features, but I'm gonna be real with you, I don't even know how to open this thing. And all the parts here which are complete in their little baggie, I have got no idea where they go in here and how this all works. So I'm not gonna fiddle around with it too much. I'm gonna figure out how this works and then maybe next time I do a Mighty Max review video, we'll take a look at it in more detail, but I'm stoked. Even though I don't know how this thing works, I'm damn happy to have it in the collection. So big shout out to Owen. Uh, I can I can tick another Doom Zone off and now I just need three. Uh, for those that collect Mighty Max, the three that I need are Traps Rattus, Nautilus, which is really tricky to come by. That, that'll probably be the last one that I end up finding. And also Mighty Max Bites Cyber Skull, which is probably my favorite out of the last few that I need to get my hands on. Now what was really cool is, on top of looking after me with a nice price on the complete Antrax, and the Lashes Lizard Mighty Max Doom Zone, Owen was also cool enough to throw in just the base shell of Cyber Skull. And even just looking at this base shell, it's missing everything, but you get a sense of how cool this thing looks. We've just got this wicked cybernetic skull with sci-fi features. I don't know whether it's realistic that I find parts to complete this, or whether you know, it's just a case of like a placeholder in the collection until I can kind of upgrade it with a complete version. But in terms of knowing what I need to complete the Cyber Skull and also how that lizard works and how to open it up and how to find the position for each of those minifigures and work out all those play features, I got a big help thanks to my mate Lee's book, The Toys of Mighty Max. Just a, a quick shout out for that book because that's how I'm gonna work out what my Cyber Skull needs and that's how I'm gonna work out how my Lashes Lizard works. So. The day's off to a cracking start. TMNT and Mighty Max, two of my favorite toy lines. And uh, yeah, it's always cool when you start a toy fair by picking up things that you genuinely will need is, a, is probably a stretch. These are things that I want, but they're things that I'm actively collecting. They're not all the random oddities that I love, but tend to distract me away from my kind of focus areas when it comes to collecting. So collecting on Penrith, we're off to a great start. Our next stop of the day, just a couple of holes down from Owen's table, we spent a good chunk of time at Tony B's table. Tony B from Uncle T's Toys. Not only is he a champion bloke, but you can always count on him for a great selection of vintage toys. And Tony, as he always does, has some awesome stuff. He had a nice wall of loose figures, including some really cool superpowers figures that I was looking at, some of Kenner's superpowers line, which I've only got a few, I need plenty of them. So it was cool to see some superpowers figures that I needed. I had a bit of a think about those. Tony also had some really cool, like vintage role-playing weapon toys from uh, Masters of the Universe and Thundercats. They were really cool to see. He had some fun Ninja Turtles oddities, which are always fun, the, the kind of merchandise, the other collectibles above and beyond the vintage figures that are always really cool to see. But the thing that really drew me in at Tony B's table was his selection of Ring Raiders. And that's something that I've, I can kind of count on Tony B for. The last few shows, he's he's had a great selection of Ring Raiders, sometimes loose, sometimes carded, the knockoff Ring Raiders, which we've spoken about previously. But the piece de resistance of the vintage Ring Raiders line by Matchbox is the Aircraft Carrier Justice, the Air Carrier Justice. And this thing is just beautiful. It looked to be in great condition. And I gotta tell you guys, I thought long and hard about this. I obviously dropped a bit of coin at Owen's table, like within the first 10 minutes of walking through the door. So, you know, Air Carrier Justice was one of those things that I really wanted, but I just had to have a bit of a think about it and, and see if maybe I, I came back and, and had a closer look towards the end of the day. But one thing I did snap up real quick from Tony B's table is this awesome Ring Raiders book. When you go to a toy fair like Collecticon, you see lots of little picture books from cartoons and action figure lines that we loved back in the day, like. Ninja Turtles and Ghostbusters, but I never see this sort of stuff for Ring Raiders. You know, what's really interesting about Ring Raiders is not a lot of people really know much about the characters, the, the villains and heroes. 
uh, the leaders of each squadron. So it's really cool to see stuff like this that help fill in the gaps in terms of who the characters are and what they're really fighting over. Uh, not to mention seeing some of this wicked artwork. So this was an absolute no-brainer for this. I was happy to put my hand in my pocket for this, but Tony you know, gave it to me for a fiver. And not only that, he threw in this awesome little Ring Raiders mini comic, which again just has awesome artwork and a really cool little cross sell showing off some of the toys in the line. A nice checklist of the different uh, Ring Raiders figures that form those different squadrons and some of the play sets and accessories. So big, big shout out to Tony B from Uncle T's Toys. Of course, park next door to Tony B, you had Tony B's young daughter selling her trading cards and other collectibles, which is awesome to see. Always like to make a point of picking up a little piece from uh, Tony B's young daughter, and I was stoked that she had some Goosebumps books that were kindly donated by my mate Dean from Totally Taylor Retro Hunters, but hey, I was more than happy to pay a gold coin for Welcome to Dead House, the very first book in the Goosebumps book series. I remember this clearly from back in the day, and uh, I'm just stoked to have this in the collection. I'm not going hard out when it comes to the Goosebumps books, but if I can try and collect those first sort of 20 books that came out, the ones that I you know remember reading as a kid, original versions like with the bumpy header up here, and uh, I can I can get them for like a couple of bucks a piece at like a flea market or a toy fair or or an op shop or something like that. I'll do that all day. So really happy to have Goosebumps welcome to Dead House and, and a big shout out to Tony B's daughter. And then right next door, we also had my mate Carl from Retro Cartel Collectibles. Carl's always got a great selection of vintage toys. A lot of loose figures from different toy lines, all baggied up and presented nicely. Had a bit of a dig there. Unfortunately, nothing I needed in Carl's loose action figures. But Carl had some really cool Ninja Turtles merch. He had some trading cards. He had like some scrapbook and activity books and story books and all that sort of stuff. And one thing that Carl had that I just had to jump on was this really cool carded TMNT tooth timer. The, the toothbrush with the little sand timer here to make sure that you're brushing your teeth for the right length of time. I just thought this was awesome. 15 bucks, um, yeah, it's a little bit battered, but I just had to get this in the collection. I think this will display great behind some of the figures or with some of my other merch. So big shout out to Carl from Retro Cartel Collectibles. Really happy to have the TMNT tooth timer in the collection. Next up, we made our way over to the other hall to catch up with Steve and Min, the boys from Minikins Collectibles, who always have an awesome selection and are great blokes, just fun to chat with while you're digging through some loose figures. And as they often do, the boys from Minikins had an awesome selection of loose figures. And I've picked up a whole bunch of different action figure lines from these guys in the past, like Kenner Terminator 2 figures, Robin Hood figures, even like really random stuff like Ertl's Super Mario Brothers movie figures. So it's always worth having a dig through the loose figures there. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't seeing anything there that I needed in the way of loose figures, but they did have two vintage TMNT pieces that I was very much interested in. They had a pair of like water squirting toys, and they also had a vintage TMNT yo-yo, both sealed on card. Now, I found myself just kind of looking at both of them, trying to work out which one do I want because I knew that I wanted to add one of those pieces to my collection and the boys made that decision really easy for me by just giving me a bundle price that I couldn't say no to to scoop up both. So I was really happy to scoop up both the vintage yo-yo and also the water squirters. Now later on in the day I had a chat with my mate Dan who'd been eyeing off those water squirters and mentioned to me that he was a bit bummed out that he missed out on them and I mentioned that hey listen the boys made me a deal and I scooped up both of them so I was more than happy to part with the water squirters to Dan because I gotta be honest with you the, the piece that I was kind of leaning to most was the yo-yo and here I have it here we've got the vintage yo-yo mint on card. Now 
I, I have to admit, like if we're looking at the toys, I do think those water squirters are kind of cool because they're a little bit mad ball-y. I just thought the toys themselves were cool. But as far as like displayability, I think this yo-yo on card is just beautiful. So I was really happy to pick this up. The yo-yo itself is cool. Like it's a pretty iconic toy. It's something that you do see plenty of, you know, loose on, on tables at toy fairs and flea markets. I see it in YouTube videos all the time, but I don't believe I've seen one on the card before. So, so it was really cool to see. But what's interesting is when you look at the card back, you've actually got yo-yos, the same yo-yo from all different franchises, you know, from Batman to Ghostbusters, Nintendo, Garfield. Like it's, it's weird. It's kind of jarring to see other franchises on the back of a licensed TMNT product. So I thought that was interesting. And not only did the boys from Minikins make me a stupid deal for both the yo-yos and the, and the water squirters, the guys were also kind enough to pull out for me just a mixed bag of Mighty Max, I guess, playset shells, uh, just incomplete sets that they thought I would appreciate, and I absolutely do. Uh, I mentioned to the guys that I have a couple of these already in the collection, but I do need this Lava Beast here. I don't have the Lava Beast in the collection. I do have this Hydra Battle Warrior down here in my collection, but mine's actually broken. So that's definitely gonna be an upgrade, and I can try and refer to that Toys of Mighty Max book by Lee and try to piece together some of these. But dude, super appreciative of the boys from Minikins that they would even think of setting this stuff aside from me, putting my name on a little post-it and passing it over to me at Collecticon, in addition to hooking me up with a great price on those Turtles pieces. So big shout out to the boys from Minikins. Next up, right across from Minikins store, you had the stall of a familiar seller, a great bloke named Scott, who I always chat with at Collecticons, and Scott's always good for a great selection of loose vintage action figures, generally from lines that I collect, like Hasbro WWF figures. I've also bought a Mighty Max Doom Zone set from him in the past. But the last couple of Collecticons, I've not been able to buy anything from Scott because when it comes to the lines that I collect, he's had the more high-end items. You know, you might recall from seeing in previous Collecticon videos, some of those really rare Hasbro WWF green card figures. You know, Ludwig Borger and Evil Crush and the Smoking Guns. Uh, figures that are just outside of my budget when it comes to collecting the vintage Hasbro wrestlers. Uh, speaking of which, Scott did have that Evil Crush figure, which was an absolute beauty. So I had to get another shot at that because that's probably as close as I'm getting to that figure anytime soon. But I was stoked because for the first time in ages, I actually saw a Hasbro figure at Collecticon that I needed to add to my collection. It's been years since I've picked up a Hasbro WWF figure at Collecticon, so just, just another thing that made today special. And the figure that I'm talking about is this really cool Series 2 Hacksaw Jim Duggan figure, complete with his original 2x4 accessory, which is the most important thing to me. I've already got this figure in my collection, but I've been chasing this 2x4 accessory. and. Not only am I stoked to have this figure because of the 2x4, this is a definite upgrade. The figure is much cleaner, his action works, which is awesome. So I was stoked to pick up the Hasbro Hacksaw Jim Duggan figure. And on top of the Duggan figure, Scott had something that I definitely didn't expect to see today, and that's a vintage Mad Ball right here with this dust brain. Now this isn't one of the original like standalone Mad Balls vintage figures. This is actually the head off one of the Mad Balls uh, head poppers. Uh, this is Dust Brain and he is awesome. Now when it comes to the original vintage Mad Balls, they're like foam balls. This is more of like a rubbery kind of ball. And you can see the little peg hole there where he would have popped onto the, the head popper's body. And yeah, I, I have no original like vintage Mad Balls in my collection. I've got knockoffs and other toys that are kind of reminiscent of different 80s gross out Mad Ball style properties, but not an original vintage Mad Ball. So I'm stoked to have this Dust Brain in the collection. And, and even better than that, Scott just bundled it up with the Hasbro Hacks or Duggan and just gave me an awesome price. So big shout out to Scott. Stoked to have the Mad Balls Dust Brain Head Popper Head in the collection.
Next up, I went and checked out the stall of Ben from Longboard Collectibles. I've mentioned Ben on the channel before. Ben was the guy that hooked me up with that awesome vintage TMNT hanging display that I recently got up in the collection room and shared during my collection room tour video a few weeks back. Uh, Ben's a great guy and he always has some cool stuff. And as awesome as some of like the more high-end vintage action figures from Star Wars and other vintage lines that Ben had, what was drawing my attention the most was just this awesome little rummage tub of oddities. You know, I'm talking, he had a Chuck Norris Karate Commandos figure there with some accessories. He had some California Raisins, some Garbage Pal Kids pieces, a really cool Staria's comic, a line that I rarely see. So that was really cool to see with some beautiful artwork, like a vintage Pound Puppy Plus, just lots of random stuff. Now, I didn't end up picking anything up from that tub for myself, but you know, we, we, we were really missing Matt from Keep On Collecting today. Matt's still recovering from an operation and couldn't make it. So I really wanted to make a point of just picking up a couple of things for Matt. So I picked up one of those really cool pocket games from Pac-Man. You know, those kind of cheap rack toy games that your parents would get you when you're on a road trip to kind of shut you up in the back seat. Those fun little ball bearing games of skill. There was a really cool Pac-Man one there that I just, I just thought that was awesome probably 70s or maybe 80s. So I scooped that up. I thought Matt would appreciate that. It would display nice in Matt's collection room. And it's tricky to buy for guys like Matt and Andrew because these guys have been collecting for 20 or 30 years or more. So you got to find the more obscure stuff to find stuff that they don't already have. And speaking of which, I also picked up a really cool Mr. T air freshener that I thought Matt would appreciate. So yeah, big shout out to Bennett Longboard for looking after me with those items and a big shout out to Matt from Keep On Collecting. The next stall I stopped at today was Freaky Deaky Toys, a Collecticon staple, and Deke from Freaky Deaky Toys always has a great selection of both vintage and modern toys. Today he had a lot of really cool modern stuff, NECA and Super 7 Turtles figures, you know, the Universal Monsters Deluxe NECA Turtles, which are really cool. Some really cool modern Silverhawk stuff, which I'd not seen in the flesh before. And another thing that I'd not seen in the flesh before were the Super 7 Toxic Crusaders, which aren't necessarily my thing, but that's what Collecticon's all about. It's cool to be able to like wander around and see this stuff that I'm not necessarily into, but I, I love gawking at it. So it was really cool to see Deke's selection. He also had Boglins on offer as he always does, mainly modern Boglins, but also some vintage Boglins as well, which are really cool. Now the piece that I picked up from Deke today was actually a win from one of his recent auctions on the Freaky Deaky Toys Facebook group. And it's a figure that I've spoken about, I've been on the hunt for for quite a while now, and it's the Kenner Terminator 2 Endo Glow Terminator figure, the last figure that I've really been on the hunt for to complete the Kenner Terminator 2 line. It's not complete, it's missing both the gun and the projectile that the gun fires because this line of toys had all those crazy 90 spring-loaded weapons. So I still need to track down those, but until I do, I've got an awesome placeholder in the collection. This figure has a beautiful sculpt. I love that wicked glow-in-the-dark two-tone deco. And this thing is just awesome. So I'm pumped to get it on the shelf. And a big shout out to Deke for bringing this along. At this point in time, we've done a complete run of the show floor, so we decided to go back to Owen's table to see if there was anything we missed, if there was anything there to be picked up, and yeah, it turned out I'd missed quite a bit because when we first hit Owen's table, like right through the doors, I was so zeroed in on the Turtles and on the Mighty Max and just overwhelmed by all that cool stuff he had that I completely missed the fact that Owen had an awesome selection of Toxic Crusaders. And yeah, by this point it had been rinsed through, but there was still some awesome Toxic Crusaders there. If you guys follow the channel, you'll know that when it comes to Toxic Crusaders, the main thing that I'm on the hunt for is Bonehead. Yeah, I need vehicles and I need parts to complete vehicles that I've already got, but my main focus is the figures. 
and the last figure that I need to complete the run of figures is Bonehead. And Owen had two really cool Boneheads there. Both complete, one of them was missing the sticker, so I thought, okay, cool, it's missing the sticker off the waist, that means I'm off the hook. And then when I put that down, I picked up another complete Bonehead, this time it had the sticker. So, um, yeah, I thought about pulling the trigger on that, but again, like I'd done quite a bit of damage today, so I thought we'd give the Bonehead a miss, we'd leave one figure out there still to be found, because that's the psychology of collecting, right? Like, I, I kind of, I want it, but I also don't want to reach that finish line. So it's nice to just, like, pick one up and, and throw it back and, and leave one out there still to be pursued next time. But it was really cool to see just awesome, loose, complete, and some incomplete Toxic Crusaders figures. And what was also really cool was Owen pulled out some, like, storage tubs of TMNT accessories, just shitloads of vintage TMNT parts all sorted and organized. And Dean and Dan had kind of a look through the parts to see if there was anything there they needed. And my mate Dean actually managed to pick up, like, quite a few parts that he needed, which was great. But I was just like so overwhelmed with so much cool stuff around me that the part of my brain that remembers which vintage TMNT accessories that I needed just, it just I was inaccessible. It was like I just couldn't reach that. So I didn't end up like digging through and finding any parts, but like Owen's a legend. He said I can always send him a list and he can see if he's got anything that I need. And based on the selection of accessories that I saw, I reckon he's going to be able to help me out with that quite a bit. So I'll definitely get that list off to Owen and maybe we can pick up some TMNT parts ahead of the next Collecticon. But one thing that was really cool, uh, just to kind of finish off our time at Owen's table, was Owen had this wicked vintage TMNT kids sleeping bag, which was mad, just an awesome design, pure nostalgia. And my mate Dan managed to scoop that up for a stupid good price. So yeah, big shout out to Owen for looking after Dan with that. And it was cool to see one of my mates pick up this wicked vintage sleeping bag. And with that done, all that was left to do was to go back to Tony B's table and agonize over that Air Carrier Justice playset. And I must have stared at that thing on and off for like half an hour. If you add up all the minutes and seconds that I stared at that thing, I probably spent at least half an hour of my three hours at Collecticon looking at that Air Carrier Justice playset. That thing is beautiful. It looked to be in great condition. It looked to be complete or thereabouts. If you collect Ring Raiders, definitely let me know in the comments if that was complete. But uh, yeah, Tony B was happy to give me a great little discount on that and, and get me across the line. But man, I did some damage today. And the big thing that kind of contributed to my inability to jump on that today, aside from the money, was just the fact that, like, if you saw my recent Collection Room Tour video, I just don't have the space for it. And the last thing I want to do is pick up a piece as beautiful as that Ring Raiders Air Carrier Justice just to put it in a, in a tote tub and store it away for the next however many months or years until I have a display spot when it, when it could be picked up and displayed and enjoyed by another collector. So there's always something that I, th I think I'm going to regret after leaving Collecticon for not picking up and uh, Air Carrier Justice might be that item for today. So there you have it guys, that about covers my day at Collecticon Penrith. I've said it before, I'll say it again, Collecticon's awesome. If you collect this sort of stuff, if you're into the sort of shit that I'm into and you're in the greater Sydney area or you're in Canberra, down south, central coast, whatever it is, if you're within a couple of hours drive of Collecticon Penrith, I highly recommend you go check it out. Obviously videos like mine focus on the vintage toys, but there's plenty of cool stuff there to be found. If you collect retro gaming or comics or trading cards or modern toys, I definitely recommend you check it out as well. Now it's not just about the sellers, a big part of my Collecticon experience is also the people. It's great chatting with familiar faces, both sellers and fellow collectors. And it's great meeting new faces as well. It never ceases to blow me away when someone introduces themselves to me and tells me they enjoy my videos. It's just so special, man. I do this for myself. It's just a fun little extension to my collecting and a way to be a little bit creative and document what I'm doing here. But for people out there that enjoy my videos enough to actually come and say hi and introduce themselves, that just means a ton. So a big shout out to people like Luke, and also Craig and Rachel, who I had a great chat with Craig. He showed me some of his pickups and some of his photos of his collection room, which was just awesome to see. You've also got Mitch and his missus Stan and Billy. I had a good chat with Billy and also Tracy, who randomly watches my videos, but was also Dean's year one teacher back in primary school. So that's a bit of a spin out, but that was just awesome. Big shout out to everyone that said hi. I really do appreciate it. 
And uh, yeah, that will do us for another video. Oh, before I go, obviously I've got to give a big shout out to my mates, Dean, Sarah, Dan, Monique, Andrew, everyone else that we were hanging out with today that made it a fun day. And as is often the case, I've got to finish these videos with some additional gifts. Uh, Dean was kind enough to hook me up with the cape from the Kenner Sheriff of Nottingham figure, which was really cool. My Sheriff of Nottingham's not on display because he doesn't have any accessories. Uh, but he'll look far more respectable with his cape, so I can get that on display, so that's awesome. And Dean is steadily helping me grow my collection of knockoff Ring Raiders, hooking me up with another pair of wicked Sky Strike Ring Fighters figures here, which are really cool. So the Sky Strike Ring Fighters collection is gaining more and more steam, so big shout out to Dean for that. And also my mate Adam hooked me up with this wicked TMNT, I don't know whether it's a biscuit tin or whether it's a candy tin, but whatever it is, I love it. It's got all the turtles on the outsides, including stats and some really weird stats at that. Like it turns out their birthplace is from different parts all over the US, which is just bizarre. So interesting stats, but just beautiful artwork, just a fun little piece of turtle history. And not only does this display great, but this is like a really practical way for me to store some accessories. So that's awesome. Big shout out to Adam for hooking me up with that. It was great to have a chat with Adam today as it always is. And also Sarah came through big. So we've got some wicked brownies and caramel slice here that Sarah was kind enough to send my way. What better way to finish the day than having some treats like this. So Sarah was kind enough to bring a whole bunch of us some awesome homemade dessert. So yeah, wicked way to finish another awesome Sunday at Collecticon. So that will do us for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you've made it this far, you're a dead set champion. I hope to hear from you in the comments. Let me know if you were at Collecticon. Let me know what you thought of what I picked up or if you saw anything that I captured in the video that I missed out on. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, as always, you can hit us up on Instagram at Crusher Collects. Hope to hear from you there as well. But that'll do us. I'll be back soon for the next one. And until then, cheers.